Hey guys, and welcome to some more Star Citizen. Today I wanted to talk more in depth about radars, scanning, and the first implementation of the active ping, and the new scanning systems that hopefully should be coming to us with 3.0. So radars and scanning, we saw a load of this on ATV and RTV last week. Many careers are going to be based on scanning, or the ability to scan, or basically it's useful in the universe of Star Citizen. In 3.0, that's going to be combat, policing, piracy, smuggling, um, uh, cargo, all that sort of stuff is going to require scanning um, or radars to be used, whether that's for your protection, uh, for stealing other people's cargo, to find out what the people are doing. There might be some forms of smuggling um, if there are banned cargo, so we'll have to wait and see for that. But there looks like there's a quite a large difference between active and passive scanning now, and that adding that active scanning. So radars and scanners are separate now in the new system. Uh, the radar detects contacts, and the scanner allows you to get more data from them. Once a radar has detected a target, you're going to be able to pull data from that target by scanning them over time. In the first implementation, this will be as simple as just staying targeted on a ship and keeping line of sight to it and over time you'll get more and more information about that ship, about that target, their weapons, crew, cargo, all that sort of jazz. Breaking line of sight or noise in the way, so that could be uh, environmental noise like a planet or an asteroid goes past or a chaff is launched or something or situational kind of uh, noise will disrupt and can break scans. And there are going to be scan detectors that might warn you when you're being scanned. Like, oh, boop, 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 danger, danger, there's a scanner scanning me. Smugglers could use that um, so that they know that they're being scanned and they can then eject their cargo. That's the kind of idea behind that. Um, or maybe you're a scout and you want to know if you're being scanned at all so you can get away if you're in a terrapin. Something like that. So the sort of information that you might learn other than the basics of what we've already seen, uh, what items you've got on your ship, uh, what weapons, exactly what those weapons do, affiliation, hull health, shield health, um, uh, specific equipment, the owner um, who, who's piloting the ship, the passengers on the ship, Does do any of those people have a wanted status, cargo, um, all the information on the various modules on your ship. The longer you stay scanning a ship, um, the more information you'll see. Obviously, there might be some specialist scanners that will allow you to see more or different information, um, like they might be able to scan your cargo more easily, that sort of stuff, or be able to break um, anything that tries to dampen scans. So let's talk more about the active ping, which has been dubbed the golf swing system and seemed to make quite a few people angry. Previously, we've just had the passive radar, and now we're going to have the active radar pings too. It sends out a pulse that amplifies signals. In practice, you're going to charge up the scanner in the first implement like a golf swing in a golf game where you hold power and then release when you've got the sweet spot that you want. The more, uh, the, the better you've landed that sweet spot or exactly what power you want, the more effective your radar pulse is going to be for what you want it to do. Uh, if you don't do it correctly, you might not detect anything or your signal might be really loud. You might be really easy to detect. The longer you charge, the more powerful it is, longer range, but you could overcharge it. You could blind your senses, you could make yourself really visible and vulnerable. And you're charging the pulse, just the fact you're charging it could affect your radar and your vulnerability too. So it's not something you're going to be able to want to do all the time. And when you do do it, you're going to want to do it right. The idea here is for a powerful addition to passive scanning, passive radar. But you might not necessarily get all the details of the ship when you ping a ship effectively because that's what the scan the scanner's trying to draw information from a target but that active ping on the radar is just going to allow you to see um, a, a, an object's size its cross section maybe the ir and em numbers and there's a potential of faking or getting incorrect or incomplete info when you do that and the idea of that golf swing is to show that there's some form of skill involved in that scanner operator profession of doing active pings. This is going to evolve. This is very much a first iteration of that system just to get it into the game because the functionality is incredibly important. Mainly to show that there's gonna be that skill and extra function and interactivity. So that, that's why it's there. You're gonna charge that pulse, you're gonna release it. That's gonna make a ping show up to see if a ship's there, but that ping will fade over time. It's important gameplay to expose hiding ships and other threats. They're looking to make a system to allow you to charge up power and scanning potential. And, and that, again, the longer you charge, the more powerful the ping will be and the more info you're going to get from it. Risks are 
as I said, they will overcharge, make yourself super vid visible, but also that you could damage your scanner, for example. You might have to wait for two minutes with your scanner overloaded. And they want it, all of this, all of this scan operation, all of this radar operation, for it to be a skill that you can learn as a player and that you can fail at. So there are going to be different signature types, obviously, that we know about. This cross section, this is actually 3D in game based on the angle and it's real time. It's the real time angle of the ship that you're looking at or that actually gets hit by the ping. Recognition of the cross sections quickly at varying angles could be a skill in itself. So if you see a, the side on view of a gladius and um, you might not know where that is unless you've, you've seen that picture a few times before and obviously ships that change angle they're going to look odd but you might get good at recognizing that. When it comes to cross section detection you're not necessarily um, going to be able to see the entire ship or work out exactly what it is. IR and EM signal detection are based on the items that that ship's using. Um, are they burning really hot because they're using their thrusters? Are they using a load of power? That's going to affect what their ship looks like, the different power draw and the different heats, uh, all that sort of jazz. Signature management and stealth. So hull plating might reduce your signature. Heat masking could reduce your IR. Um, stealth equipment like lower... Um, uh, emission power plants or lower EEM power plants could reduce your signal again, but might reduce the power available to your ship. There will be sub items that you can attach to modules and equipment to make them harder to scan, or at least for them to take longer to find info about that particular item when you're being scanned. Turning off and managing systems is a large part of signature management and stealth and counteracting someone scanning or radar pinging you. Cross-section spoofing would be hard, um, but not impossible. They've talked about chaff maybe making your ship look bigger. EM and IR signatures can be masked and managed, but you could potentially spoof a larger um, signal to either intimidate or confuse a target. They plan for you to be able to quickly charge up um, power or heat and then release it quickly and if you did that repeatedly you could have like a pulse sig signature that could be enticing to other players so they go what the hell is that asteroids and stars and other spatial bodies so asteroids and planets and things they're all going to give off signatures they're all going to affect scans enabling you to hide or mask your signatures and um, if you're hiding behind an asteroid or something or there's a uh, radiation from a particular star in that um, system you're going to be able to scan those large objects too you're about to scan asteroids um, you can put mining um, scanners on your ship uh, mineral scanners enabling you to gather various extra data on potential mining spots and ores on asteroids too there's an example of three ships that are looking at an asteroid a hornet the, the scanners tell it this is an asteroid the carrack the carrack knows it's an asteroid but gets some other basic detail it knows where it came from it has some of the history of the asteroid it knows its basic mineral info as well that sort of stuff uh, the prospector here, he can see all of that other data that we've just discussed, but also where the good stuff is, where the gold is, individual mining patches for it to be able to get in and sink its teeth into. And if you scanned this data on an asteroid, you could sell it to people that might want to mine, or you could mine it yourself, use it for yourself, use it for your own org. Why the new system then? So passive radar is great for arena commander and dogfighting. In the PU, the newer system is much, much more important. You're going to want to scan for low loads of stuff including what cargo's on a ship, um, where ships are, um, all that sort of stuff. You can, uh, you might be hiding from a ship, you might be mining and need to know if there's enemies around, you might be hunting a miner. The Terraprin, Freelancer, Durr, Constellation of Killer, uh, Drake Herald, they're all going to have like um, various extra mounts um, and different ranges, extra range for utility and scanning. Bounty hunters might want to scan ships to see who's on board. Smugglers and pirates might need to know how to trick that scanning and, and, and um, radar system um, so that they can disappear or avoid detection. Scouting ahead is obviously going to be incredibly important for this as well. So people will want to use those scanners covertly to gather as much info in a particular sector about enemy forces or about uh, mineral compositions and stuff without being seen by another party. It would give recon and scanning a huge part in fleet battles and um, selling information, uh, that sort of stuff. And that's the sort of thing that I think the, the Herald and the Terrapin might excel at. So these mechanics are going to be both important for Squadron 42 and Star Citizen. Scan operators might be in really, really high demand in Star Citizen once those uh, functionalities get fleshed out a bit more. So I want to talk a little tiny bit about Item System 2.0, which has made this much more possible. So scanners are going to be equipment, um, so are radars like shields and power plants, and they're going to come in all different shapes and sizes. So Item 2.0 
is the reason that ships will be creating EM and IR signatures based on that item usage. They're going to have various grades of scanners and radars as well, um, between um, grade A to D, but also different types. Civilian uh, types might be balanced. Stealth will be harder to detect, but normally weaker. Um, uh, military might be more powerful and really great, but they're gonna require a lot of power or cooling. Uh, same, similar with industrial, that large emissions, but loads of power needed. Uh, and they might have downsides in other ways, like burning really hot. Um, competition ones, they're with racing in mind. And players are gonna be able to control and influence their ship across multiple consoles in the future too, making multi-crew and system management much more active and enjoyable as a function. Very important to scan operation. You need that to be a role entirely to itself because otherwise if it's too easy, then people won't need a scan operator. This means that scanning info is also gonna be easy to share between players and stations in the same ship uh, because of the way they want to do the stations and item system 2.0. But there's also going to be ways of sharing information with your party and fleet in the future too, even if they're not directly on your ship. And remember, this implementation of scanning and radars is very much, especially with the actor stuff, a first pass at the system. Um, and it's very much really with fighters and single-seater combat ships in mind, this particular pass, this first implementation. You're going to be able to control everything for this active ping in a single-seat fighter, and the basics of passive scanning, um, uh, all that sort of jazz is just kind of done for you. It's really easy, it's the golf system, bam, I want to see further, I want to detect threats in a large area, I'm going to use that active ping to see where they are. But that's not the full intended system very, very early. So what are we going to get in the future? Um, what's scanning going to be like for, for larger ships as well? A scan operator on a larger ship will have a dedicated sc console and a lot more scanning tools. These tools will be based on what uh, sh equipment the ship has. Its scanner, um, does it have a utility attachment with a radar or some other detection equipment on it as well, like the Herald, the Killer, Terrapin, or the Freelancer Der? Scanning cargo, scanning for crew, bounty hunting type stuff, more and more detailed scans and scanning infos of um, large fleets and that sort of stuff. That That's all going to be really important and data that you can grab um, in the future. Yes, this might also contain the golf swing ping as an option or as a, uh, as a feature of that or whatever that kind of functionality that we're going to have will evolve into in the future. But remember, that's just a really early feature of the active scanning, active radar mechanics. More types of sensor and scanner and radar will continue to come out and get fleshed out into that system with long range scanners, for example, and specialist scanners. They're going to be able to pick up data that just other devices just can't or other functionality and other little mini games that uh, other devices might not even have. In the first pass, I suppose the sweep spot for scanning um, in the game will be finding and getting the largest pulse that you can but balancing that with not getting detected and then acting on the info you receive. That's in fact, acting on the info you receive and being able to disseminate exactly what that data means is really going to be a skill um, into itself. Pro scan operators might be able to work out what ships are purely based on signature data from active pings, like what's the, what's the IR and EM of that ship? Oh, it's likely to be a Carrack because they fall within these ranges. Um, and same with the spotting the CS and the cross section, that sort of stuff. You'll be able to go, well, it looks like this from this angle. That's probably a Gladius from this angle or a Carrack from this angle. So in the future, we're going to have lots more features for radar scanning and specialist detection equipment, but also ways to block and avoid it. It's a game in some situations of rock, scissors, paper, without knowing if you're playing against someone um, until you win or lose. You don't even know if there's a player there. For me, having large amounts of data and info and being able to draw logical conclusions about what that data says is quite fun and exciting. Logic games where you've got to quickly work out um, to get the best data and that sort of stuff. That's for me, that doesn't really require a, a system or a feature, just literally needs you to the scanners for you to give you that data in its quite raw form. Uh, obviously, you could have maybe scanners that disseminate that data for you and give you um, much more, um, uh, less maybe less detailed, but much more simple uh, data that you don't have to 
scowl through. Uh, and I think that's going to be awesome. I think that kind of functionality and choice might be awesome. Uh, again, that's very much my own opinion and thoughts on the matter. Oh, scanning on foot as well. We should go through this pretty quickly. For the first person shooter stuff, they are working on decibel sound detection, uh, but they want to be able to use a similar system for that that the ships are using, and they're fundamentally going to be based on the same code and that sort of stuff. So players will also be emitting EM and IR signatures using the uh, item system 2.0, um, their weapons, their um, life support systems, uh, are they EVAing and using thrusters, are they running around, all that data is going to be fed into what scanners might be able to detect. So if you're scanning a, a, a target on foot and he's directly in your crosshairs or, or totally stationary, then you might be able to scan them quite quickly, find out loads about them, uh, find out their name, the equipment they've got, all that sort of stuff. But if they're running around, um, jumping uh, behind walls, um, getting in the way of other items, you're going to find it a lot harder to scan them quickly and it's effectively noise in the way. You're going to be able to harden your gear as well from being scanned, so it's going to be harder to be scanned. Again, there might be trade-offs for putting that, they might just be really expensive, they might um, lessen the power of certain things. Um, knowing if someone has a criminal record, for example, when you scan them, you want to scan them to see if they're wanted because you're a bounty hunter or something. You're going to need to be able to connect to another database or um, have scanning equipment specifically for that in some situations. So some scanners will require the target to be a certain range away, that sort of stuff. It's expect things like that. Again, as with ships, the longer you scan the target, the more you find out about them in their gear. There may be scanners um, that are hard to detect that you're being scanned from in the first place. And that's the idea there. If you're a bounty hunter, you want to scan that target without knowing that they're being scanned. You want them to not to be totally unaware uh, of what's going on so you can go, ha ha, I will follow them. Uh, anyway, hopefully we should have more of the active radar and more scanning features in 3.0. And this is obviously going to be an important part of the of roles in 3.0 really so it's kind of important for me for them to get it in there remember the golf swing is part of a larger system it's part of a first implementation of something and not representative of the final full fleshed out scanning and radar gameplay and open development means that we can have our opinion on this once we get it into our hands feel free to share what you think of uh, the direction that scanning and radar play is going but remember try not to get angry or, or annoyed at the system and um, uh, unless you've actually had physical hands-on experience with it. And that's what we need, and then we can give constructive feedback. Remember, commenting on any of my videos during October, or pretty much any other month, gets you a chance to win a Star Citizen ship. I'm going to grab some stuff at uh, the Citizen Con and the anniversary sales and that sort of stuff uh, for my giveaways. There's also a link in the description below to the redacted wide giveaway, where we're giving away an Avenger Titan and game package, so check that out. Please remember to like and subscribe. Subscribe, that's what I was trying to say there with lots of S's. It really does help me and I'll see you in the verse.